So, Egypt's military rulers have offered to bring forward elections to next summer, promising to hand power to a civilian president by July. But as the crowds mass in Cairo's Tahrir Square for another major protest tonight, it is not yet clear whether that will be enough to end five days of violence. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman is there. Jonathan. John, it seems that Egypt's generals have decided not to shoot their way out of trouble. Instead, they've come up with concessions. They're talking about appointing a new prime minister of a so-called salvation government. They're talking about parliament parliamentary elections going ahead next Monday as planned. And above all, they're talking about a presidential election, a civilian president to be elected by ne next June at the latest. But nobody knows if that will be enough to make these crowds go home. Through the day and into the night, the crowds here have been growing. Tahrir Square is once again a seething mass of people. Egyptians have already achieved one remarkable revolution this year. Now they're going for the double. And tonight it seemed to be working. In a nationwide address, Egypt's commander in chief appeared on television and promised a presidential election by next June. In the square, protesters listened intently on their radios. But afterwards, this group was still calling for the field marshal's resignation. And it's too early to say whether Egypt's latest crisis is now over. These battles have been raging not for hours, but for days. Protesters throwing stones outside Egypt's interior ministry and then fleeing in retreat and the heart of the biggest city in the Arab world has been plunged into chaos. Here on the streets of Cairo, it's as if the Mubarak revolution had never happened. And the anger at Egypt's unfinished revolution seems to be growing. The tear gas is far more toxic than the stuff the police used during February's revolution. Made in America, it says here. But if there's one lesson from the Arab Spring, it's that violence breeds more violence. Mohamed Feled is just 16 and about to throw a Molotov cocktail at police. We want a civilian government, he says simply. We want the military to leave. In Cairo, students have been on the front line of the violence, some of them clearly spoiling for a fight. But demonstrations like these are now spreading across Egypt. First they forced President Mubarak out, and now they have the 76-year-old field marshal who replaced him in their sights. We will take him to the prison, to Torah prison as Mubarak. Okay, he killed Egyptians as Mubarak did. There is no difference between Tantawi and Mubarak. All day, the injured have been ferried from the front line on the backs of motorbikes. It's a human courier service over a hundred an hour, arriving at this makeshift field hospital alone. And the more casualties, the more others seem determined to take their place. None of this will stop till the military gives us a specific departure date, says the man in charge. The military keep leaving things unclear. In a nearby mosque, we found the injured flowing in so fast that the doctors and nurses could barely cope and asked us to leave. Trauma, breathing problems, broken bones, children who'd been caught up in angry stampedes, either towards or away from the police. Tonight, Egypt's generals have set a departure date. Now, these protesters must decide when to set theirs.